Hello, this is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, and so excited to be talking about a topic today that comes up a lot, has come up a lot in the group. This is just like an important thing to look at. So I'm so glad that we get to chat. So hello, what we do here is end eating disorders, food crazies, using nothing but your brain. That's it. And in fact, that's a big part of what we're talking about today. So here's a question that comes up all the time. And I just wanted to pop on because it's something that just like keeps coming up that we need to address right here and right now. So a lot of times there's a question about like, hey, what do you guys do to stop binging? And then we get this like, oh, I do this, I do this, I eat this way, I you know, have to do this stuff, I stay in these circumstances, I need to feel this way. So I want you guys to understand that recovery is not freedom. And I want you guys to understand what freedom is. And then you make your own choices, right? It's like you can do recovery, you can do freedom. I know that for me, when I was bulimic for so many years and I was binge eating, even the times that I wasn't binging, where I sort of had it under control, I did not feel free. I still felt obsessed about food. I still felt broken. I still felt like I had to manage all the stuff in my life. And there was something in me that just said, there has to be a way to just be done with it, to not just manage my eating disorder for the rest of my life that I caught somehow that I don't know how, and I'm so mad that I caught it, right? There has to be a way to just not have an eating disorder anymore. And through the hundreds of women who have graduated and men who have graduated from our program and are now free, like the evidence is really clear. Like you don't have to manage your eating disorder. You can just not have an eating disorder anymore. And that's the big difference. Recovery is when you found a way to not binge or not binge as much. You found a way to manage or control your existing eating disorder. Freedom is when you don't have anything to manage because you don't have an eating disorder anymore, because you're a normal eater, because you're relaxed around food. So let's look at that, because I want to actually give you guys the process. I'm going to pull back the curtain and show you guys the actual process of how that is done. So first, let's go into the, the issue with this first thing, right? Just like, you know, saying, oh, like, this is how I stop binge eating, or this is how, you know, I have recovery, right? So there, if you're like, oh, okay, well, I, as long as I eat this certain way, I'm not binging. What happens when you don't eat that certain way anymore? How is that freedom? So, or you go into this place of like, okay, so I'll give you an example. There's a woman that I know was bulimic for very many years and she's, she's recovered, right? She's not bulimic anymore. She doesn't do the actions of, bulim of bulimia, but she still considers herself a bulimic. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, tell me, how did you get over, I'm using her language, right? How did you get over your bulimia? She's like, you know what? I picked up yoga. And as long as I do yoga, I don't binge and I don't purge. And I'm like, okay, like, that's awesome. So what happens if you don't do yoga? She's like, well, I'll never not do yoga. It's the thing that manages my eating disorder. In fact, now she's a yoga instructor. Her whole life is yoga. When she travels, she always has to make sure there's a yoga studio that she can get to. She doesn't want to travel a lot because it's harder to get to a yoga studio. And if she's happy with that, that's great. I want you guys to know there's no judgment. You can keep your eating disorder, you can manage your eating disorder, or you can be free from your eating disorder. Any of that is fine, but I just want you guys to realize the difference and know that you can have freedom. A lot of people don't know that's even a possibility for them, right? They're looking for solutions about how to manage their eating disorder because they don't even know they can be done with it. So for this woman, like, so what do you do if you can't do yoga? It's helpful to stop or keep the behavior at bay, but do you see how, for her, she doesn't have that level of freedom where she could just live her life. Like, yoga is a must, right? Or, hey, you know what, as long as I eat this certain way, then I don't binge. Okay, well, what happens if you don't eat that certain way, right? Oh, well, as long as I can just feel happy, as long as I can manage my emotions. There's another woman that I talked to who, you know, she says, oh, you know what, like, this is how I got over my eating disorder. Okay, tell me about this. She's like, you know what? I just, I have to just keep my environment really happy. Like, I just cannot expose myself to anything that brings me down. I can't have any relationships in my life that are disruptive. I can't talk to other people that have eating disorders. But I'm so recovered because as long as I do that, I don't binge. Okay, awesome. But 
What happens if you have a disruptive relationship in your life? What happens if something hard happens in your life? There are women who I have coached who have come to me after five, ten years of recovery, but something big happens. Their mom dies. Their husband loses his job. They get an autoimmune disorder. Something disruptive happens in their life, and then they're back to binging. That's not freedom. That is recovery for a time. That's managing the eating disorder. The other thing that is a risk in just recovery without freedom is that things tend to stop working so our lives get smaller and smaller. So I'll give you an example. Hey, you know what? I only binge when I'm alone at night, so I'm just not going to be alone at night anymore. And for a while, that works. But then your brain finds a way to get around that, and because you don't have the tools of freedom, then, oh, hey, guys. Oh, so glad that you're on. I forgot to welcome you guys that are on. Comment, say hello, hi. Um, love the hearts. That's so fun. And feel free to make, make any comments, ask any questions here, you guys. Um, so, so glad that you're here. So for a while, that works, right? Oh, this is my trigger. I'm going to put that in quotes because I do not believe in triggers. We can do another video about that. But you have this trigger that's like, oh, well, as long as I'm not alone at night, then I stop binging for a while. And then your brain finds a way around it and you binge. You're not alone. You're like at a party and you're still binging at night. Oh, man. Well, why isn't this working anymore? What do I need to do? What other circumstances do I need to control? Do you see how this is not sustainable and this is not free if you have to have a circumstance in place? Oh, well, you know what? Like I'm not getting enough sleep or I'm not, you know, managing things, you know, emotionally. Okay, so now I have to be happy and I have to be never alone at night. That works for a while. Works as in like you're not binging for a while. Then you binge. Oh, okay. Well, I have to be happy and I have to not be alone at night and I have to not eat any sugar. That works for a while. So then it doesn't. So do you see how your life gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you can do this many things in your life without binging and you have to keep track of this many things in your life to manage not binging? And it gets to be completely unsustainable because... We keep on going for recovery through circumstances as opposed to freedom that starts internally, and we're going to talk about that. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks for the comment, you guys. A uh, video about, um, you know, triggers would be cool. All right, noted. Feel free to post if you want videos about different things, you guys. In fact, we should talk about that soon because I want to make sure we're all on the same page with, like, the non-existence of triggers. <laughs> that is really important. All right, so... As if you don't have freedom and you just have recovery, then your life just gets smaller and smaller and you're dependent on all this other stuff. So I'm going to show you guys the very steps that my clients walk through to get them to that place of actual freedom, not just recovery, but actually being free. Okay, ready? First, understand that every time we binge, it's just because there is some sort of chatter that we believe. Any emotion that we feel, any behavior that we do is because of a cascade of thoughts. Oh, did I say emotion that you believed? Scratch that. Chatter that you believed. Chatter are the thoughts that lead you and keep you in the cycle of binge eating. Okay. I don't know if I said that wrong. So anything that we do, like binge eating, is because of, there's a cascade of thoughts that leads you there. So first, you need to be aware of the chatter that is leading to the binge. Now, one big thing that I take my clients through right at the beginning is like an inventory of like what's happening in your brain. So I want to give you some examples. Like there is a woman who came into the program a little while ago, and she's having amazing results. But for her, she knew about my principles. She'd done the videos, right? But for her, it was like she thought that she didn't have chatter. Like she would check in. She's like, I don't have any chatter. How do I call the chatter if I don't have any chatter? So the first thing for her is for us to work on uncovering what the chatter was. And as soon as we did that process and she saw what the chatter was, she's like, whoa, now that she's aware of it, then I can show her how to change it. Another thing that happens sometimes is people think they know what their chatter is, but there are other layers that's keeping them binging they don't even know about. So I had a woman graduate from the program a little while ago. She said, this is my chatter, boom, 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 boom. Then with us working together, she found out, oh man, that's like one part of my chatter. Really, my chatter is all this stuff, right? For her, 
that her chatter that was driving the binging wasn't the chatter she was aware of at first. As soon as she is aware of that other chatter, oh, okay, and now she can change it. Now she can end her binge eating, and that's exactly what happened. So it's a really cool experience to have that awareness so then you can do something about it. So that's first. Second, once you're aware, you go through the process of knowing what to do with those thoughts. So the thoughts aren't impacting you anymore because you know the process of now that I'm aware of them, now what do I do with them? Okay, calling out the chatter is one tool to do that. We just do whatever we need to to separate ourselves from those thoughts and it's a little different for everyone, right? We all have different missing pieces, but once you have all those missing pieces in place and you know just what to do with the chatter, then it doesn't matter what the thoughts are. And I'm gonna say that again. It doesn't matter what the thoughts are because you know exactly what to do with them so that they don't lead to binging anymore. The thoughts are there, but they are irrelevant because they don't need to be connected to binging anymore and you know just what to do with them. In the second phase is when the binging stops. When you know what to do with the chatter and when you know how to not believe it anymore, then the binging stops because it was just the cascade of chatter that led to the binging and now there's nothing in there that leads to binging anymore. So that's phase number two, all right? The third phase is now that your binging is over and gone, you know exactly what to do with any of those thoughts that used to lead you to binging, then you can let your brain change. So it's not like things have been the same way. It's not that you're a certain way. It's not like that you're a binge eater. Thanks for the hearts, you guys, that's awesome. Um, you're not like a binge eater and you have a binge eater brain. It's that you started into the habit of binge eating and then you just kept recreating that brain over and over. We literally recreate our brains all the time. So once the behavior of binge eating is gone and it's not attached to your thoughts anymore, then your brain, without any effort of your own, just starts recreating a normal eater brain. You get rid of the behavior because you know exactly how to end the habit of binge eating and then new habits and new brain connections start forming because you're not binge eating anymore. It's really cool. And so the urge, the appeal, the compulsion to binge eat goes away and it's effortless because your brain is just creating a new brain that isn't a binge eater's brain anymore. Hurrah! It's amazing! And then you have a brain that just automatically needs your reaction feels effortless around food. So for instance, the upcoming live event, you guys, March 8th, 9th, and 10th in Nashville, Tennessee, that is a huge part of the, the what we do there, right? Like, look at the title of the event. So the title is The Food Freedom Habit, Effortless Every Day. What it's about is you put the habits in place to change your brain, and then being a normal eater is effortless because you've created a brain that normal eats automatically. So it doesn't matter. Your thoughts don't matter. They are irrelevant. Your circumstances don't matter. They are irrelevant. All those things are irrelevant because none of those things can make you binge. And that is freedom. That is the difference between recovery and just managing your eating disorder to actually being free. So I wanna tell you guys a story of a woman that I worked with um, she was in OA for 25 years, and she hadn't binged in 25 years. She also hadn't eaten flour or white sugar for 25 years, and she felt like she was going insane because she was so scared of food. That's the reason that she came to me. She's like, Lydia, I don't need to stop binging. I'm not binging, but I have to find a way to relax around food. I'm scared all the time of, of messing up. I feel totally limited. I've completely changed my life, my relationships, my friendships, my social life, because I'm constantly trying to stay away from the drugs of white flour and sugar. And she had, she for 25 years had never felt free. Yes, she was not binge eating anymore, but she did not feel free at all. She was terrified of food. She was obsessed with food. So that is the big thing, you guys. If the only thing is that you just wanna stop the binge eating, then that's fine. You can put circumstances in place, you'll have to keep adjusting them, 
but like that's recovery, right? Like you're not binging anymore. But really what we do here, my whole emphasis is about freeing people so that it's not something you need to manage. It's not a struggle. It's really just about having the absolute freedom to live your life and have zero threat of binge eating because you've created a brain that doesn't even want to binge eat. Like the desire goes away and it's not a big deal. You just put in the work to be able to change that. So there are a couple of things um, you know, that you guys can do moving forward to help with that. One, you can have a free session with our team. You can go to lydiawenty.com slash apply and there's a calendar right there. Pop on the calendar. Um, it's been fun to see sort of the flurry of bookings around the holidays. I think you guys are needing, you know, lots of help, especially around this time, which is, you know, cool. We have, you know, times even during this time of year that we're going to um, have spots available for you. So pop on and snag a spot um, on the calendar at lydiawenty.com slash apply. And um, come the new year, there's going to be a window of time where you can get tickets. I know they'll go very quickly. So put it on your calendars. The tickets should be live either uh, January 1st or January 2nd. So if you're not on the email list, I'm going to send it to, to them first. Make sure to go to lydialifestyle.com. Um, get your free ebook. Make sure that you're on um, the, the update list where I you know, roll out new videos every Monday, all of that because you'll get the information about tickets um, just right away um, before they sell out. So pop on there if you're not already. Um, if you are in there, make a little note on your calendar to make sure to, to check you know, New Year's Day um, and see there will be early bird um, pricing on the tickets then. And you can just come and have that experience of freedom with me in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's gonna be so awesome. It'll be such an amazing, amazing thing and there will be women that you have seen um, in the recovery stories videos that have come so far and are free from their eating troubles and are just, you know, have actually walked this journey. They're going to be there as well. We have some really fun surprises for you guys. So we will see you there. And thank you guys for your gratitude. I really appreciate all this love, just like the thank yous and the hearts. And like, I just love this community that we have. And that is the difference between recovery and freedom. Why recovery is not freedom and how you can be free. So Lydia, the Lifestyle Coach, signing off. Mwah. Bye, guys.